Well, last week we went snakehead fishing, and this week we're going back for more, but this time we're hopping on a boat and heading out for the black water. Last week we were fishing along the banks and guts of Buttons Creek for snakehead fish. The reputation of the usually camera shy fish continued with Gary Smith catching the lone snakehead. See how the teeth kind of sit back in there, kind of like a sharp when they bite down, they kind of expose themselves out. This time, however, hopes to be different. We're gonna go catch some snakeheads, hopefully. I saw a few jump them a while ago, so we'll see what we can do. A few days of 80 degree temperatures should work wonders, and instead of fishing from the bank, Gary, along with Eddie Bramble, are hopping in the boat to go find the fish. Getting off the launch could be problematic. It is rather shallow, not to mention muddy. But that's what a mud motor is made for, so once on plane, Gary and Eddie are on their way. No depth finder is necessary. And the boat ride along the big Blackwater River alone proves to be worth the trip. Bald eagles abound, and if you didn't know better, it's easy to think you're anywhere else in the world. It's just a beautiful river. I, yeah. I just, it's the greatest place I've ever been. I've been a lot of different places in the world. And this is probably my favorite water that I've ever been on. It's easy to see why, but the guys are here to fish, and fishing's exactly what they are doing. Cast after cast without so much as a bite, but plenty of signs that the targeted species, the one which has vastly altered the fishery here, is right under their noses. Uh, very destructive, that's all I can say. Yeah. I mean, from what this fishery used to be when I was growing up, and what it is now out here, it's just totally changed. Nearly gone are the bass, bluegill, and crappie. All serve as food for the snakehead. It's a lot of top order, a lot, a lot of patience, a lot of patience. You really gotta wait for that bite to turn on, but once it does, it just, it clicks right on for you. And after moving just around the corner, patience finally pays off. <laughs> That came out of nowhere. Yes, it did. What happened? <laughs> it was, we were just bringing it right along and he snatched her up. It was great. Oh, there you go. Nice. <laughs> Love them buzzing. Yes. Beautiful. We get that we got her. Quick release. <laughs> yeah. They slammed it. That's what they do on the buzz bait. That's what's so much fun. They hook themselves. There's no trick to it. They just hit it. Good. It might come on a little bit now. He was just swimming around and I just got too close. That's exactly what it is. Oh, there's another frog boy over there. Yeah, that's what you do. You wait all day, and at the end it comes on. Yeah, it was a slow start. Uh, we, we were really struggling when we first got out there. We could see them jumping all around us. Uh, they were just not biting. They were giving us a fit. Uh, we came around that bend at the end there, and it turned on. We kept, caught about three fish in probably 10, 15 minutes. It was, it was a good turn on. After a flurry of fish in just a few minutes, it's time to make the scenic trip back along the river. Now we've seen captains docking their boats at jaw-dropping speeds before, but they just may have met their match today on the mud flats of Buttons Creek. What do you think? <laughs> That's the first. That's worth the whole ride there. About it. We probably put about 500 casts into it before we finally got the, the three the three bites. So, but that's what it takes sometimes. You really you got to wait for the bite to turn on because, like I said, we knew the fish were there, but, but you just had to wait and be patient and stay on it. Snakeheads may have changed the fishery, but they haven't changed fishing. 
it's still the anticipation of hooking a fish that keeps anglers going back for more.